thousands of viewers wander around. They look for open shops for their peace of mind. But don't you worry, friends. Here's a new episode that will take all pandemic sadness from your troubled soul. Hi, guys. Hope you enjoyed my poetic intro. Yes, this episode will be a bit funny, but you should take it really seriously, because I will show you 10 things that you should never ever do with your car. I'm sure I will surprise you with some. Number one, ignoring the level of engine oil. But what do I exactly mean? Okay, so I'm not even talking about this terrible situation when you see that a warning light is on and you don't give a shit, because I will back to it later. What I mean is checking oil level on a dipstick, because I'm not sure you are aware of what an engine oil really is for your motor. You will tell me that it's a lubricant. Sure, it provides all rotating elements in an engine, such as a bearing shell, a shaft and pistons, with a lubrication film when they are moving. But do you know that oil dissipates the heat from an engine as much as a water jacket does? And now, ignoring the level of oil not to this point that it's not even on the dipstick, but reducing it by one liter until a warning light is on. Because let's not forget, a red warning light in most cases signifies an oil pressure loss. So when designing an oil sum capacity and all mechanisms of oil lubrication, the producer thought about the amount of oil inside it and about heat dissipation altogether. If there is an oil cooler, sometimes the amount of oil in the whole system system can be smaller. But let's keep in mind that reducing this amount will probably result in a temperature rise inside the crankcase. Very few of you actually know that not only a water jacket, but oil as well, play a crucial role. Those of you who take a part in car racing know that all these beeping indicators are to help you monitor your engine. Oil temperature very often reaches 110, 120 or 130 degrees. Exceeding this temperature without additional oil cooling results in a temperature rise of liquid, which leads to engine overheating. So let's not forget to check the oil level on a dipstick, always before a journey and if a warning light is on, it's usually either red or orange, refill the oil tank. New cars probably don't have it, but still, we should never scream on oil. We should always refill an oil tank, because I know this, know it alls, who come to my garage, leave their cars, and then I see a completely dry dipstick. I'm not kidding. I saw it with my own eyes. There's a theory that between a maximum and a minimum on a dipstick, there's a liter. I don't know if it's true, but this is what people say. So let's remember to never go below a minimum on a dipstick and to not let the warning light be on. Number two, and we can actually split it into two points, reaving a cold engine. I will tell you a story, not a pretty one, but true for most of you. It's summer, nice weather, a party with friends. You get in the car, turn the key and just start driving, not thinking about whether or not the engine is warm enough. No big deal, right? But really, after each engine startup, we should wait 30, 40 seconds or even a minute to let oil circulate through the oil artery, so that everything reaches proper temperature and oil has a good density. Only then we can start a ride. Honestly, reaving a cold engine, so the moment when you sit in your car and want to show off to your bodies and tragically for your engine. A bad lubrication film is the first thing, and then all the elements get their butts kicked, rotate being dry and after three, four situations like that with your 15-year-old jalopy, don't bother yourself with coming to a car mechanic. Just start grilling sausages for your car's goodbye party. And don't you forget, my dear friends, that no matter how smart you are and how well you know your car, motors are always designed to work at a certain temperature. And as for oil, believe me, if water is 90 degrees, then oil hasn't even reached its operating temperature, so it's really worth the while to warm everything up. Engine rotation is up to 250, this is what is happening inside, guys. That's why proper lubrication is critical. Number 3. You are peeling rubber on a racetrack or, God forbid, around the city, so right after a ride. Don't you ever do that! Why shouldn't you apply the handbrake after sport driving? The brakes are hot, so are the brake discs, and it may all melt together. A hot brake disc, you know, materials, volume, and above all, it will lead to a situation that in an hour, two or three, you will start up your engine, take the end brake off, the wheels will start moving and boom! It may even turn out that a brake block left a dent on a brake disc. This happens in case of a regular braking system, not the sport one. So whatever happens, cool down your car for a while or shift into first gear. Let the brake block be separated from the brake disc. Few people actually know about this, but it's a useful thing. Number 4. My favorite. Alright, alright, one of my favorites. 
driving with too low tire pressure or what's worse, driving on a flat tire. And many of you are so critical of run flat technology, tire pressure monitoring systems and so on. But how many of you actually check at least every six months the pressure in each wheel? And sure, unless the tire looks like this one here, it's not difficult to realize that it's a flat one. But many drivers that use tires with 30 or 35 profile have often no idea there's literally no air inside their wheels. Driving with no air inside the wheels completely destroys a tire, that's the first thing. The tire gets deformed and should never be used again, because it's likely to blow out in the place of deformation. Secondly, driving with too low tire pressure can be seriously dangerous in case of braking on a wet, slippery road, especially if your right side has a lower pressure, because you'll be pulled like crazy from left to right on a highway or road. Another thing, too high temperature combined with too low pressure can blow up the tire. Just imagine that situation on a highway at the speed of 140 km per hour. It's no joke. So I strongly suggest that at least once in three months you check pressure in all four wheels. If you feel that it pulls you to a side, go to a gas station and if you have a big tire with a low profile and you can't see the formation, check the pressure. Checking these things equals your life life, your safety and the safety of other users. Number 5. If you enjoy tinkering with your car, don't ever let positive and negative terminals get connected through a wrench. Same happens with starters. You won't get believe how many times I heard these stories, legends in fact, that some tools melted together here and there. But if positive and negative terminals get connected, it's just 12 volts, so not a big deal, right? Well, not exactly, as sometimes we have 70 ATMs which generate an electric arc, and that's how welding is possible. But is it really like that? Okay, if there's no number 6, it means that the experiment didn't go as expected, so let's just give it a go. Clamps got melted, wrench got melted, so please don't do that at home. Also, that was an old battery used up. Filling up your tank past the first click that you feel in the gas nozzle in an attempt to fuel it up to the very brim. That's true eco driving. Joe Sixpack understands the idea to the core. Oh, and I heard that if I press on a van when the tank is almost full, I will cram even more fuel into the tank. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Manufacturers design the old venting systems for both petrol and diesel engines so that these systems extract all vaporous that are emitted by petrol. As for older cars with shrivelled seals, Filling up your tank beyond the maximum level may lead to gasoline stinking inside your car and will make the whole system inefficient and useless. So guys, believe me, it's really not worth it. Moreover, what's even worse, the whole vent can block up and it can seriously damage the fuel tank. Been there, fix that. Take my word for it. So, we should fill up the tank as much as it's suggested by the manufacturer. Let's not prove to others that if they say 55 liters, we can cram 60. The same goes for LPG gas bottles. They are bigger because there must be some additional space inside. So let's not get cocky, let's not be tightwads and fill up as much as needed. You don't have to become a hero in your own home. Le Roi Merlin will take care of that. So, when you feel the first click, resist the temptation and stop tanking up. Somebody created the system for a reason and it's not to store up additional liters of petrol. Number 7. Just like 7 deadly sins, the worst thing that can happen to your car. The engine is overheating, the water is overheating. And remember, driving with an overheated engine can lead to permanent damage both in the bottom and upper part of the engine. The motor is kaput. But how can you recognize that something is wrong? First and foremost, if you don't have temperature indication and the warning light is on, you can try out this one, safe option. Turn the heating up maximally, pray to God, and if you feel a strong blast of heat, it's not that bad, because either your thermostat is dead or the water is leaking. However, if you do that and there's no blast of hot temperature, it's much worse because it means that the water pump is broken. If that's the case, pull over immediately and don't lift up the bonnet. Why not? First of all, really high pressure caused by a situation when the temperature goes up and the heat is not dissipated can result in hoses or a detious explosion and I guess you wouldn't like to open the bonnet and have this kind of Sasha Gray moments. In general, let's remember to check the level of cooling fluid, to not pour water inside the radiator to take care of the cooling system's tightness and to replace old pumps and the thermostats for the new ones. It will really help us in a long journey because there's no going back from the engine overheating. Another reason can be not functioning fast
fans of Visco clutches and tire Visco fans, but that's a different topic. Driving with an overheated engine is really the worst thing and I know such a smart asses who, when the temperature went up, didn't turn the heating up, didn't transfer the heat through the heater and were planning to enjoy the ride until they would come across a gas station. Let's be clear, it's killing your motor. Aluminium cylinder heads that crack, oh, I could make a whole episode about it. Let's move to number 8. I would like to dedicate number 8 to old masters of eco driving who don't fuel up their cars unless they really, really have to. Believe me, in the autumn winter period, driving on reserve fuel doesn't favor fuel systems in compression ignition engines. Water can accumulate as a result of condensed vaporous in the tank, which leads to so called water in the fuel that freezes in filters. That's the first thing. In theory, that shouldn't be the case for petrol engines, but unfortunately, in real life, the accumulation of vaporous or tank rusting happens. Some car users are actually afraid of filling their tanks full. They say that the petrol will run over somewhere where it shouldn't. Generally speaking, it's much better to refuel cars full up at once, instead of doing that in smaller portions. I think you can easily plan your budget in advance so that you are able to do it. And just think about this possible situation that you are on a vacation and you like this thrill of driving on reserve fuel. And then you find yourself in the middle of nowhere, in the bonnies. <laughs> now what? Another important thing is to remember Remember that in case of diesel or petrol engines, if we really end up with no petrol, no diesel in the tank, all this sediment, this disgusting shit gets inside to our fuel system. If it's filtered, nice. The filter will be blocked, the pump smashed or something like that. We often totally forget about it and really we shouldn't. Number 9. Oh wow, there's been many already, are you still with me? That's great. Don't forget to subscribe the channel and give the thumbs up. Haven't I done enough episodes about tightening belts in your car? Apparently not. If you want to kill yourself, feel free, but don't kill others. And now look, the biggest mistake that you make, the cardinal one, when you are driving a vehicle is doing this thing. You buy yourself such large plates, lock it up and it's a done deal, no beeping. But what's my point here? Let's focus on unfastened seat belts. If your airbag warning light or seatbelt light is on, then your airbag receives information that it shouldn't explode. So let's think about this Joe Sixpack who drives 30 km per hour on fasted seatbelts, the large plate is locked up. The computer thinks that the seatbelts are fastened, so they must react whenever needed. And look at this, you are down, your spine is fractured, damaged. Or maybe you have a spinal cord injury. That's what you get for smarting off, think about it. Oh, and think about Joe's girlfriend sitting in the front seat, stretching her legs beautifully up to the windscreen. Joe hits a little deer, and then the airbag explodes right below his girlfriend's legs. Total imbecility, no need to say. Stupidity, recklessness. Somebody created the seatbelts so that you fasten them. Nothing complicated about it. You have one life, use it well. And finally, number 10. Cooling of a naturally aspirated engine. Well, it doesn't matter if it's a diesel or a petrol engine if it's not turbocharged. After an intensive ride, when you are killing it on a track day or anywhere else, you must cool your motor engine down. As you've probably seen in my Skoda Superb or in some tuned cars, there are often many car gauges, which indicate oil temperature, exhaust temperature and many others. And now, remember that if the oil temperature is 120 or 130 Celsius after an intense ride with a natural aspirated engine and you will start the car, well will this oil go? Right to the oil sump. The heat goes up, something bad can happen. There is no cooling at this point, no circulation. That's why you should always remember to cool your engine. The water temperature doesn't equal the temperature of oil. Keep that in mind. And the motor type doesn't matter in this case, not really. Turbocharged engines are always more prone to overheating and burning out. Because if we stall the car, the turbine must still be spinning for a while. But naturally aspirated engines oil will still be hot, so it's best to take it slow, drive slowly for a while and let the engine work, let the fans do their job. It's as simple as that, a very basic thing, but we often forget about it. If you like this one, learn something new, give the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel so you're up to date with everything. Alright, time to say goodbye. Take care guys, see you next time.